I got a question from Alexander, and since a lot of people have expressed a similar concern, I thought I should just make a video response. The question is about the death threats I get. They're usually in the comments section of YouTube. I don't even see most of them because I don't read most of the comments, but when I do see death threats, I sometimes share them on Facebook along with my response. Alexander writes, I heard Dr. James White say that he questions the wisdom in showing these threats. What would you say to that? Well, I'd have to know what James actually said, and I don't. If James objects to me posting the death threats, that would seem odd to me. I think people need to know what happens when you criticize Muhammad, and I think they need to see the fruit of Islam. So I'm assuming that whatever James said, he's referring to more than just posting death threats. He could mean that he questions the wisdom of me posting death threats that are filled with cursing and every sort of foul language you can imagine and promises to rape my wife and mother. I censor words when I'm quoting them in videos, but I post the threats as they are. I post them with the language intact because I found from experience that whenever I delete anything, Muslims accuse me of hiding the text and changing the meaning. So I usually post the threats in all their demonic glory. But I doubt that James was objecting to me not censoring language. If there's a question about how I deal with Islamic death threats, I think the most obvious objection would be that I tend to taunt the people who are threatening me. I don't always taunt them. I try to get a read on why the person is threatening to kill me. Sometimes Muslims threaten me because I've given them a lot of new information about Muhammad. They don't know how to deal with this information. They get frustrated and they say they're going to kill me. If that's the situation, I'm usually pretty nice because I understand how difficult it must be for them to hear that they've been lied to all their lives by the people they trust most. But other Muslims threaten to kill me because they're convinced that the only way to respond to criticism is violence or threats of violence. And I usually start taunting them, often incorporating criticisms of Islam. Let's look at some examples. If I ever see David Wood censored, you best believe you gonna die. Following the interpretive methods of politicians, the media, and westernized Muslims, I assume that by you gonna die, you actually mean you gonna get a great big hug. I can't wait. Please follow my speaking schedule so you can give me the hug I so richly deserve for all of the loving things I say about your false prophet. You don't know anything about Islam and if could kill you, I would. If you want to kill me, take a number and wait your turn. David, you don't know what is going to happen to you if you fall in my hand. False. I know exactly what would happen. I'd blast you with the truth about your wannabe prophet Muhammad, and you'd either 1. leave Islam, 2. run away, or 3. become violent. Since you're a keyboard jihadist who sends threats from his mother's basement, I assign a low probability to 3. That leaves us with 1 or 2. So you can either leave Islam right now, or avoid me entirely to insulate yourself from the truth about your false prophet. The choice is yours, Cupcake. XOXOXO. You're censored liar -ing. Just cause this is the internet, you can insult anyone you wish. Pray I don't ever see you ill. Finish you. I count no less than 20 spelling, punctuation, and capitalization errors in your 24-word comment. That has to be a record of some sort. Of course, compared to your prophet, you're the next Charles Dickens, so you deserve two awards. Unfortunately, I'm all out of ribbons. Where you live, Satanic David Wood. Kindly share your address. I live on the corner of Jesus' Lord Avenue and Muhammad was a false prophet boulevard. It's a rapidly expanding neighborhood. You'd love it here. Sometimes I actually tell them where to find me. You censored, you are paid for speaking. Come out and speak. If you have guts, I will kill you. Hi, Zamir. I'll be speaking next Monday, June 27th at 6.30 p.m. in Winter Springs, Florida, just outside of Orlando. Check my site in a few days for details. You'll have a perfect opportunity to slaughter me there, unless you're just a keyboard jihadist, i.e. a total coward. In the meantime, here's some valuable information about your prophet, most of which your leaders hid from you, to keep you in your present state of complete ignorance. I'll be sharing lots of information like this at the meeting. Video link, take care, XOXOXOXO. David Wood, you're full of censored, like always, can't wait till I see your ugly pig face in the street, maggot. Leave your house, David, you coward. 
I can't leave my house since I'm not in my house. I live in New York, but I'm in Florida right now. I'm here to tell people the truth about your religion. Of course, you're welcome to stop me. Here's the location. I'll share your message when I'm speaking, and I'll see if you're in the audience. If you're not there, people around the world will know that you didn't stand up for your prophet. Censored you guys, censored if I find you guys ill, shoot you with my Uzi from my car window, and shout Allahu Akbar, then plant the Tawheed flag on your face. In the end, ill probably get a bunch of Hor al Ain's in paradise for killing you guys. Thanks in advance. Allah made you to make this video so I can get rewarded for your death. Thanks, Allahu Akbar. You will get shot by my Uzi in the face, then burn in Jahannam. Afterwards, enjoy your life, unless you make a repentance video and repent ASAP. Hurry. You've got an Uzi? Those are made by an Israeli company. It's good to see that in the midst of all your foul language and questionable literacy, you remain open-minded enough to support Jewish companies. Mazel tov. Look, you four-eye censored sucker. If I ever saw you, I'll cut you into peace and feed you to my dog. Muhammad is a prophet, and he's not anything close to what you're saying. But a day will come, and we will have our revenge from people like you. You have a dog? Sahih al-Bukhari, 3322. The Prophet said angels do not enter a house which has either a dog or a picture in it. Sahih al-Bukhari, 3323. Allah's Messenger ordered that dogs should be killed. I guess you don't take your Prophet's words any more seriously than I do. Say hi to your dog for me. Lol. Censored, you both take down this video immediately. I'm not kidding who gave you the right. I will send f 16 Fig Hitter jets to bomb your satanic studio. Ha ha, goodbye. My leprechaun will protect me from your imaginary F-16s. Act 17 Apologetics. Censored, I censored you up. You watch your mouth before you get shoot. Censored, censored. If I see you down street, I will kick your censored. You kiss the black stone with that mouth? I want to censor your mother and burn you a line on top of her. Hi, Link ZR001. I see that your channel is filled with Islamic videos, so you and I both know where you're getting your inclination to rape my mother and burn me alive on top of her. By the way, I assume you meant alive and not a line, since spelling clearly isn't your strong suit. The Quran and Hadith are filled with passages promoting the rape of non-Muslim women. Just so you know, however, there is some disagreement among Muslim scholars on the matter of burning people alive. Although Abu Bakr and Ali both burn people alive, Ibn Abbas claimed that Muhammad said, do not punish with Allah's punishment. And Ibn Abbas interpreted this to mean that Muslims shouldn't burn people to death, but should behead or crucify them instead. So if you favor Abu Bakr's opinion, you'll clearly want to burn me. But if you favor Ibn Abbas's interpretation, you should consider an alternative. Of course, the best alternative is to abandon your belief in the false prophet who has convinced you that such revolting behavior is the will of God. Turn to the true Lord, Jesus Christ, who can set you free from your desires to rape women and burn men. These are usually from men, but occasionally a girl jumps in. Oh, how I wish to see this guy one day. I would, wallahi, kill him. If he is lucky, he better stay home and talk behind the screen. Jahil. Hi, Layla. I'm not sure how you're going to kill me. You couldn't succeed at a direct physical attack, since your prophet called women glass vessels, meaning you're exceptionally weak and fragile. Sahih al-Bukhari, 6161. So you'd probably just fall over if you tried to choke me or stab me. That means you'd have to carefully plan some way of murdering me. Unfortunately, your prophet said that women are intellectually deficient and stupid. Sahih al-Bukhari, 2658. So any sort of planning would end in complete and hilarious failure. Of course, I'd try to talk you out of killing me by showing you the right path, but your prophet declared that women are immoral and that most of the inhabitants of hell are women. Sahih Muslim 142. So, according to your prophet, you probably can't even understand moral reasoning. Sad that your religion puts you in such an awful state, wanting to kill but utterly incapable of doing anything about it and never able to find a better way. For more on women in Islam, watch this video link. So, should I be taunting these jihadis? I'm going to have to say... Yes, there are some general reasons someone might want to take an aggressive approach with jihadis. For instance, I found from experience that the more aggressive Muslims tend to respect a more aggressive approach. 
especially keyboard jihadis. They're like betas looking for an alpha. Be the alpha, and you're in their heads forever. Also, the only way many jihadis know how to deal with problems is with violence or threats of violence. The only way they're going to get past threats and intimidation is if they come to realize that it doesn't work. So the more people who laugh at their threats, the sooner we can have some sort of meaningful discussion. Beyond this, I think that taunting jihadis is better for the jihadis themselves. The reason these guys lose their minds whenever someone says anything critical of Muhammad or the Quran is that they have extremely thin skin, and Islam encourages them to have tissue paper thin skin. This is why they riot over cartoons. But human beings can get used to anything, and I think that if jihadis are exposed to enough criticism, they can learn to live with it. Again, this is better for them, not just for us. So those are some of the general reasons for being aggressive with jihadis. When I'm taunting jihadis, though, I have additional considerations in mind. To understand my reasoning, we have to go back to 2009 and 2010. In 2009 and 2010, Nabil and I were having some problems with the city of Dearborn, Michigan, and some people started threatening us. And Christians would ask me, aren't you scared they're going to kill you? When they asked me that, I would think to myself, even if I were scared of dying, why would I be scared that these guys are going to kill me? That Terry Jones guy in Florida is threatening to have a burn the Quran day. Obviously, if a Muslim wants to kill someone, he's going to kill Terry Jones, not me. But at the same time, there was something different between, on the one hand, Terry Jones, and on the other hand, some of the former Muslims I knew. Muslims today can scream all they want that Nabil wasn't a real Muslim, but when we went somewhere, Muslims would surround him and bombard him with arguments. They weren't worried about me. Why were they flipping out over Nabil? So, I didn't take death threats seriously at all, because I knew that there were much more important targets than me. But I also knew that Muslims are generally far more upset over former Muslims than they are over non-Muslims. I felt pretty safe, but I was never really sure that my friends, who were former Muslims, were safe. What's a Christian to do when he realizes that his friends are in more danger than he is? In John 15, 13, Jesus said, Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. There are lots of ways you might lay down your life for your friends. A soldier might throw himself on a grenade. A missionary might lay down his life to bring the gospel to dangerous areas. But if you've got friends who are under a death sentence for leaving Islam, the best way to lay down your life for them is to make sure you're always a more attractive target in the eyes of people who want to kill them. If a jihadi decides he wants to kill someone, as long as you pop into the jihadi's head before your friends do, your friends are pretty safe. So, how do you get inside a jihadi's head? Easy. You tell him that, according to Muslim sources, Allah commits more shirk than anyone in history and is therefore destined for hell. Shirk is the worst possible sin. You commit shirk when you swear by something other than Allah. Since Allah swears by everything seen and unseen, Allah has committed more shirk than anyone else. And because Allah knows more than anyone else, he's more responsible than anyone else when he commits the worst possible sin over and over and over. According to Muhammad and the Quran, then, Allah is the worst sinner, the most wicked idolater, the most despicable mushrik who's ever existed. You make fun of his prophet for dressing up in his child bride's nighty. The Muslim sources contain more than 30 references to Muhammad wearing women's clothing. Do not injure me regarding Aisha. The revelation does not come to me when I am in the garment of any woman except Aisha. This hadith raises a lot of questions among them. What in the name of RuPaul is Muhammad doing wearing women's clothes? Muslims are now patrolling the streets of London to enforce the revelations Muhammad received while prancing around in his child bride's nighty. You show him that if he takes the arguments of his favorite apologists seriously, the only conclusion to draw is that Allah is a mouse. If you Muslims believe in Zakir Naik's reasoning, you've, you haven't proved that Muhammad is a prophet. You prove that Allah is a mouse, and you prove that God, the mouse, will profane and disgrace <laughs> yeah. Muhammad. Yeah. You show him that 
According to his own sources, Allah killed Muhammad for being a false prophet, and he killed him at the hands of a Jewish woman. My friends, there are thousands of ways to die. Do you really think it's a coincidence that Muhammad died in exactly the way the Quran said he would die if he's a deceiver and a false prophet? Think about the justice here. The justice is just a little too poetic. This can't be a coincidence. Muhammad did more than anyone else in history to provoke hatred against Jews. Muhammad did more than anyone else in history to oppress women. Muhammad told his followers that women are stupid. And then Muhammad died a miserable, humiliating, wretched death after being outwitted by a Jewish woman. So God didn't merely disgrace Muhammad by severing his aorta, thereby identifying him as a false prophet. God added to Muhammad's degradation by severing his aorta through the hands of a Jewish woman seeking vengeance against the man who had brought her community nothing but death and rape. You send him a video from inside the Kaaba. You remind him that it's a pagan shrine and you tell him to think about you inside it whenever he bows down to pray. Hello everyone. As you can see, this message is coming to you from inside Islam's holiest site, the Kaaba. The bad news is that if you're a sincere Muslim, you've been bowing down five times a day to a pagan temple that Muhammad strong-armed from the polytheists of Mecca. The Kaaba used to be surrounded by 360 pagan idols. When Muhammad conquered Mecca, he smashed the little idols, but he kept the big idol, this cubical idolatry factory that, that serves as the focal point of Islamic worship. But if you do decide to suppress the truth, if you choose to continue bowing down to these pagan stones, then I have a simple request. Whenever you bow down to this building, I want you to remember me in it. From now on, every time you recite those empty, useless words, think about the presence of God within me inside your temple so that your prostrations will have something to do with the presence of God. But when you do all that, something else happens. You start getting messages from people who are leaving Islam. Some of them become Protestants, some of them become Catholics, some of them become atheists or agnostics. But they send you messages telling you that they left Islam because of your videos. And now you've got even more people who are under a death sentence, and you're partly responsible. Their lives are now more dangerous because they listen to you. So what do you do, especially when Islam is getting more and more violent and aggressive by the day? You dig even deeper inside the heads of the jihadis. So the jihadis send you even more threats, promising to kill you and mutilate you and burn you alive and rape your wife and mother and sister. But every message they send is only further confirmation that you're inside their heads. So you respond by making fun of their spelling and grammar, making fun of their ignorance, making fun of their cowardice, making fun of their prophet. Deeper and deeper you dig, until you're so deep inside their heads you keep tripping over their brain stems. Eventually, you're getting non-stop threats, non-stop abuse, non-stop insults. But when you wake up every morning and you read the threats and the abuse and you're still alive, you're pretty sure all your friends are safe. Sometimes you take a screenshot and post the threat along with your hilarious response. And then Christians send you a message saying you're being unwise. And you think to yourself, am I? Or am I being so wise I just blew your mind?